Okay, so what we want to work with here is the one link planar robot. And you can see we've got a description right there. It says, consider a one link robot. Uh, the robot is anchored at a point so that it can rotate freely in a two dimensional plane. We'll assume that the origin is located at the anchor point and that the coordinate pair xy denotes the coordinates of a free end of the link. Note that L denotes the length of the the length of the link and theta denotes the angle the link makes with the positive x-axis. And part A wants us to provide equations for x and y in terms of L and theta. And then asks, are these equations valid in any quadrant? So if we start from our sketch here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can, so I don't lose as much on the page. But if we're what we're essentially talking about is if we've got our origin here, we've got some sort of robot, and I'm going to use a little Lego piece to indicate this. This would be our robot arm that is able to operate in the plane of our paper, and it can rotate, if I can actually keep it centered. Um, we want to put the center at the origin, because that's what makes everything easy for us, is to think about the one locked in being at the origin. And then we can just kind of rotate it around in any direction. And at any given point, here the end of the arm, we'll mark right here, is at the point x y. And so the way we would represent that in uh, engineering is we would draw a vector. And so to draw a vector you would start with, I'll try to keep my paper level here, the start at the origin, that's going to be the tail of our vector. We would draw out to that point and draw ahead of that. So I've mentioned the word vector many times. So vector is simply a quantity with both magnitude and direction. This is in opposition to a scalar which has only magnitude. So in other words, if I were talking about a scalar, I might say that the distance is 10 miles. If I was wanting to be a vector, I'd be more specific and say that it is 10 miles let's say northeast. I've given you some sort of direction to indicate not only how far to go but what direction to go or what direction the force is acting in, those sorts of things um, is why we use vectors. And so we draw a vector. It has a tail. It has a head. We label our vector uh, they suggested we call this one L. And generally when you label a vector, we have a, put a little arrow over the top to indicate that it's a vector, not just a, a quantity. So we have vector L. Um, if we want to know the magnitude of L, We can write it in absolute value form, or a lot of times that's when you'll just see it written as that magnitude, as without the arrow on it. And so um, that's what we would have there. And so for this vector in particular, um, we've got that. And then the other thing, so we've got this, and then L is going to tell us how long the vector is, what the magnitude of it is. X and Y tells us where it ends up. And so the other thing we're interested in is this angle theta that the angle makes with the x-axis because that gives us a way to explain where it's pointing. Um, I mentioned northeast. That gives you some idea, but if I know that exact angle, I can tell you exactly what point northeast it is. Um, and so what the question asked us to do was to take these two uh, quantities, 
we know if we know x and y, find l and theta. Well, the way we can do that is if we think about this, this is really just a combination. This is really just a right triangle. I'm going to use a little bit of color to break it up. But if I draw a space there, and I should, maybe should use red on this one because the blue is not quite showing up as well. But anyway, in a space there, what I have is a right triangle. With one of the angles being theta, that one being 90, and that one being, well, it would be 90 minus theta. Um, but that's not really relevant. And so then, if it, we want to figure out what L is, we know that this side is X, the length of this side, because that's how far we went over to get to XY. And we went up Y, that that side's Y. So if we wanted to figure out what X and Y are in terms of L, we can use our trigonometry that we know. And so uh, think about the trig functions that we know. Sine, cosine, tangent, and then the inverses of each one of those, or the reciprocals of each one of those. So if I wanted to take cosine of theta, cosine, remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is x, and the hypotenuse is l. Well, then I can just multiply both sides of this equation by L and get that L times cosine theta equals X. And that is our first expression. I could do a similar thing with sine of theta. and get that the sine of theta would be the opposite side, which is y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is still L. And I'm just using L to be the magnitude of L. Again, multiply both sides of the equation by L. I get L sine theta is equal to y. So, that's the so that is the second part of the question they asked up there, which is get at an equation for x and equations for y. So if I know what l and theta are, I can easily get x and y and figure out where the head of my vector is. The other thing it asks is, is it valid in all quadrants. Let me zoom out so I don't lose the page again. So in quadrant one, we know it works. That's where we put it there. In quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. So if I use this expression, and let's say I had a point, I had one that was over here. I'm not going to draw it really straight. And if I did these same equations, only using theta 2 for my angle now, would I get the right things? Yeah, it looks like it. If I did one here, we'll call that one theta 3. Same thing. I should st it should still get me x and y that x would correspond to the cosine of theta and I would get a negative number if I'm using an angle in quadrant 3 and so I would have a negative value for x y corresponds to the vertical component and if I took sine of y on an angle that's in this quadrant 3 between 180 and 270 degrees I would get a negative value for the sine, which gives me a negative value for y, which corresponds, um, and so on. And I, could, I didn't check this side, 
But the same thing would be true if I went all the way around here and did one in quadrant four. So the answer is yes, if we remember to use, well, not really to use, but to measure theta from the, zero, from the positive x axis. Where we can get in trouble is if I decide to use, for instance, this axis to measure things. I'll call that theta b because it's bad. Um, but if I use theta b, if I use it from a different axis, from That can make it simpler if I like to keep my angles between 0 and 90, but that will give me the correct numerical value but the wrong sign. In other words, um, if I did this, I would get the wrong sign for, I would, I would, my calculation would show that x is positive even though it's actually in the negative direction. Same thing if I used it down here. The other thing I might do is if I tried to use this angle here, I'll call that one theta c, theta c we would we would flip the corresponding coordinate, the coordinating fu functions. In other words, cosine would go to y and sine would give us our x. We may also get the wrong sign. So we have to be a lot more careful. And so that's why, in general, we want to measure it from this axis, and that will keep everything straight. And so the key points of this are make sure we note these two equations, because those are going to help us a lot in the questions going forward.